Hey, what is up everyone, and the core Gundam is back! This right here is the high-grade Gundam build metaverse, Plutine Gundam. As usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so link is down there in the description if you want one of these of your own. But anyway, let's get- actually, I need to mention just how awesome that box art is. So far, the build metaverse boxes have been all fairly meh when it comes to Gundam box arts, but this one, this one has broke the metaverse mold. That is nice. Anyway, on to the review. So now jumping right on into the aesthetics and we're going to be starting with the core Gundam itself. We'll build them up later on into the Plutine Gundam which looks like this right here. But for now we'll do this part about the core Gundam. Now we've seen the core Gundam multiple times before. Was it eight times from Mercury 1 to Neptate? I, it's been so long, I can't believe it's been so long. Those were such fun little kits. I will mention though, the Core Gundam 1, for me, was always a better kit than the Core Gundam 2, which got a little bit jank and loose in comparison. So sad to say that this kit right here is featuring a variant of the Core Gundam 2, which does still feel a little bit on the janky side in the waist section, a little bit sadly. However, what we have here is quite the departure from what we would have seen before. The colors are ridiculously different than we would have seen. I remember in the actual Metaverse anime, it did mention that this was based in, and I said Ecopla, Ecopla, which I suppose is Ecopla, but in Japanese, Ecopla. So I expected this to be predominantly in that black Ecopla plastic, but it is not. I don't think there's any Ecopla on this one at all. It's just on the armor we will be taking a look at later on, but it's still cool that Bandai did do that. But yeah, we've got everything we would have seen with Core Gundam. The nice clear parts in the chest, up on the forehead. The only stickers we have here are for the eyes and head cameras. And there's a lot of building in this little guy compared to what you'd expect. Overall, just a fun, awesome little model kit and looking good. Let's get in a little bit closer. So jumping on in a little bit closer and this is exactly, well actually there's a couple of little differences, but this is pretty much exactly the same core Gundam 2 that we've known and loved for quite some time, but did, well, not quite as loved as much as the original core Gundam, but anyway. The only thing that's really new on this is we do have a new kind of extended V-fin and the face right there that is, well, it looks identical, but the muzzle and the front of the head are attached together on the runner and they're on a new runner. Besides that though, everything is pretty much the same. Nice clear parts in the chest there. The color combination is very unique. We've got a very muted green with a muted blue and a very unique purple. Overall, it does change it a lot from your standard looking Gundam, but everything else is the same as what we would have seen before. All the same little slots around back for attaching everything on, just waiting to be extended into that Plutine Gundam. Anyway, let's get it spinning. So anyway, there's that full 360 spin, and like I said, everything we see here is the same as before. Color separation-wise, this does look great. The only stickers on here are for their reflecty green sections in the head, being the eyes, head camera, rear head camera, and that is it. Otherwise, this is fully color accurate and does look nice. We do have a couple of hollow parts in the back of the hands, but that's essentially to do with the parts that attach on. So overall, there's nothing really you can complain about when it comes to the visual aspects of a core Gundam. It's a tiny, shrank down Gundam that looks fun and awesome because it is fun and awesome. So when it comes to the size of this little guy right here, it's very, very small, coming in at 10cm. It's also an incredibly, incredibly dark Gunpla, so I had to darken it to show this, but there it is side by side with the Oryx 78 II, so a standard sized Gundam, the high grade Gundam Exia. Besides some other Gundams from the same show, that being the F Kunoichi Kai, Entry Grade La Gundam, High Grade Shin Burning Gundam, and the Entry Grade Build Strike Exceed Galaxy. So now jumping into the accessories, and besides the core Gundam, there's a whole lot of plastic in here. We've got the big old shield, a pair of beam sabers with both long and short beams, three alternate hands, not including the two already attached, the beam rifle, the brand new spear slash side, and finally we do have that big old rack of Plutine armor. So I think we've been taking a look at the core Gundam for long enough, it's time to get that Plutine armor onto it. And like we've seen time and time again with these particular kits, this comes on this little stand slash kind of supplementary unit that brings it into the battle. So now it's about time to get that Plutine armor on, and this is definitely not a short process at all. First off, you take every piece of armor off of that rack flight unit. Then you need to prepare the core Gundam by moving out its shoulders just like so, popping off its hands, as well as flipping back its feet. Attaching the parts on includes attaching on some extended side skirts, attaching on a big old rear butt flap, 
Grab the legs, you need to fold the feet out like so, and then the small core Gundam's legs attach into these, and the ankles become the knees. It always works out so well, and the feet are hidden nicely around back. When it comes to the hands, you attach them into the wrist armors, and then the extended armor goes onto the back of the hands, and then you pop these onto the arms. Now, we'll mention at this point the waist joint in my Core Gundam 2 here, and all the Core Gundam 2s I've ever seen is ridiculously loose, so just, well, the legs just fell off, so it's just the torso from here on out. You attach on the chest armor underneath the armpits, then pop a little bit up top to lock them in. You grab the shield, flip around the pointy part and then attach that onto the backpack of the core Gundam. We've got a V-fin in here to attach onto in black. And finally then we've got the gigantic shoulders to just spin around these big bladed segments and then just slide them onto the shoulders just like so. And that is what it looks like. And what can I say? I do not recall any of these core Gundam based Gundam kits to be this jank. This is real bad. These just like you barely need to touch them at all. They fall off. This thing on the back just keeps dropping off, and the waist on this is absolute garbage. It also can't stand up because these ankles just keep falling back. I don't remember my boy Core Gundam being quite, well, this shite. So for this I'm going to need a stand, a wish, and a prayer to get through the rest of this review. This is surprisingly bad. It keeps falling apart on me. Getting up in the stand so it doesn't really have to support itself with the legs. It can stand up, but the ankles are quite bad, so it starts to tilt back. And then the shield that's attached onto the backpack has to kind of deal with it. I know there's a lot of weight up in the shoulders, but yeah, it feels better now up on an action base. But uh, yeah, the waist, or should I say, yeah, yeah, the waist joint in there from the waist unit to the torso is extremely, extremely weak. Easy to thicken up, of course. But out of box so far, hmm, I'm a little bit disappointed in the Plutine. Let's see where we, well, how it goes from here. So when it comes to the hands in here, I've got the hands that I've had on here the whole time, which are these holding hands. Now we do have a grand total of five hands in here. However, one of the other sets is just a standard set of holding hands. Like and the difference between the ones in my hand right here and the ones up there is these ones can open up in that old school kind of sandwich style way. And these ones here are locked shut, both of which have their advantages, of course. This won't open up on you when it's holding onto a weapon. And these ones can open up to hold weapons that can't be slid into hands. Moving into the weapons now, the first pair of weapons we have in here are a pair of beam sabers. Mine got bent in the box, which is sometimes happens. You can actually put these into some hot water and then you can straighten them out, let them cool down, and they'll keep their shape. One unusual thing here is I don't think I've ever seen a purple handle on a beam saber before. These are those flat beams. Well, when they're not bent, and these just attach into the hands in the usual kind of way, which is just like so. And according to the instructions, these don't seem to have a particular direction they need to go handle-wise. You can pop them whichever way you want. So we've got a standard beam, as well as a set of short beams in a very kind of Gundam 00 kind of way. When these are not in use, they can be stored up on the shoulders in that classic Gundam kind of way, like that and like that. So that is what they look like attached on. Next up in here, we've got the tiny little beam rifle, which looks like that. This is actually usually used in core Gundam mode, not actually in this mode. This is a close quarters attack sort of suit, so I've just popped it in for the sake of seeing what it looked like. But now we're moving on to the main weapon in here, and what this says in the manual is the Infortune Sizer, the Plutine Gundam's main weapon and its dedicated close range equipment. It is an adjustable scythe with high cutting capability and can be used as a long spear by folding down the scythe blade. So this right here is what this weapon looks like. So it is quite plain. We've got the business end right here with the scythiness. As it said in the manual, you can fold down the blade just like so. So it's a speary, speary, stabby, stabby, or whip out the tiny little scythe blade like so for some scythe scythe action. I think Death Scythe would have an absolute laugh at this tiny little side. Down the other end, we have this pointy bit which pops off just like that, and that slides down into the hand of the Plutine just like so. These wrists keep falling off. Ooh, actually pretty much everything on this kit keeps falling off. Try to hold it together. So when I was talking about the hands, I somehow forgot to mention this one right here, which is the widespread open hand, which is always really nice, and that is a left hand. When you're swapping the hands in the actual Plutine mode, you do have to take the armor off the back of them to pop onto the other ones just like so. It's just a simple click off, click on. So popping on that alternate hand and we're going to get this into a pose. Now, I'm not going to cut away for this. I'm actually going to try and get this into a pose because the thing is, this is giving me a lot of jip so far. So if this does fall apart, I want it to be seen. So let's see. I'm going to try and be as delicate as possible. <sighs> 
for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Jesus Christ, I didn't fucking touch that time. C ah, piss off. I'm really glad I actually recorded that. Oh, man. So, yeah, what the hell? Like, I... Oh, come Oh, This thing is allergic to itself. Man, what the absolute hell. This is a piece of trash. What? My boy Core Gundam. If anybody bought this, they would assume all... Seriously, if you bought this, and it's your first ever taste of Core Gundam, you'd be like, this thing is an absolute piece of garbage. Wow, I'm not sure if this is just some kind of, like, factory dud or what, but it's not holding together. I have a question. Do you have this kit, and is it falling apart like an absolute plastic hand grenade? I need to know, because this thing is driving me nuts. So anyway, on to the next piece of equipment we have in here, and these are the Bricklow Feathers. According to the instructions, it says, Stabilize your unit. <laughs> Fuck off, Bandai. Stabilize your units. Stabilize your units. These are doing anything but stabilizing this piece of trash. They're doing quite the opposite. But anyway, stabilize your units equipped to both shoulders. Used for both offense and defense. These can be used in conjunction with highly tempered blade plates. Also equipped, also equipped to the legs. Barely equipped, I'll mention. Allowing for offense and defense capabilities that are refined and acute. These can be used while connected to the forearm or alone as remote controlled weapons. Let's give it a go and see. Alright, so trying to get this off without absolutely imploding the Gundam entirely. I will mention this can be stored away on the Gundam with a little included adapter. The included adapter is this exact one right here, which looks just like that right there for attaching it onto the backpack. I'm not doing that though. Right, so popping that back on. Uh, oh man, see, it doesn't take much. Anyway, next up is this part right here. These are the break low feathers, so they can open up just like so. These are quite cool. They're very claw-like, so they can close just like that. When they're attached into the forearm, they do have a cool slashing kind of claw effect. And I think when these are actually deployed, they deploy a little something like this for some reason. Using the little 3mm peg back here, you can actually attach it onto an action base if you use an adapter. And let's just, well, get this attached onto the forearm to see how it looks. So this just moves around like so, and then can pop onto the forearm like that as a weapon. These are actually a little bit better on there than what we've been seeing so far because they don't seem to be putting as much pressure in such a funny position. But still, that's those. So yeah, what can I say, this thing doesn't hold together that great, so I'm not even going to risk going through the articulation on this kit. This is the exact same kit we've seen since all of the Core Gundam 2 kits, so that means its articulation is exactly the same as those. So if you do want to know more about them, you can check out the video where I actually checked out the first Core Gundam, and I'll show what the articulation is like in the actual Core Gundam, as well as it with some of the armor on. This is exactly the same, but for some reason this one's really fallen apart on me, even more so than any of the Core Gundam. Gundam 2s I would have seen before, so I'm not putting myself through that mental stress. No, definitely not. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I have to say I am definitely highly disappointed. I've always been such a huge fan of the core Gundam and the way it works. The way you've got a tiny little cool Gundam and a bunch of stuff that attaches onto it. I don't know where things went wrong here. Overall, when you go through the list, aesthetically it is gorgeous. It's really, really cool. This is a hard thing to film though because it is white on black, which tends to either blow out one or darken the other. But in person it does look extremely, extremely nice, and it's a cool dark take on the core Gundam. Gundam 2 and it in its armored form. When it comes to the accessories in here, they're kind of cool on paper in a way, but I find they're a little bit disappointing. We've got a bit of a okay looking side that really isn't too exciting, but the claw shoulders are quite cool and they actually attach onto the arms. Even the build of them, they're very, very nice and they do look cool on there and very, very visceral. So if you like the sort of visceral close combat weapons, this will be right up your alley. However, when it does come to the overall build of the actual thing, this thing falls apart a lot. Of course, these are easy enough fixes. Just tighten up all of the joints and this should be fine. It just makes it an absolute nightmare to review, especially in its standard state. But if this was painted or if you just tightened the joints, that would take away all of those sort of issues. So on the whole, it isn't a bad kit, 
but out of box, my one right here has been a little bit problematic. Because I've seen Core Gundam 2s before, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, and I'm not going to demote it all the way down to bronze tier, but this for me is a low silver tier Gunpla, and definitely a bit of a disappointment. Anyway, if you do want one of your own, link in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos and all of these awesome people right here who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Ten Soldier YT, Abraxas, Caleb Engelhart, Dashiell Marmion, Golel Rockstar, Joe, Lauren Seahack, or G95061, Ten Soldier YT again, and Van Fawn.